Hello, I am Digital Illustrator Mike Meth, and uh, so I just recently launched my online education service, Mike Meth Education, and uh, what I want to do uh, as kind of like a, a free, short introductory glimpse into what it is that I do and the types of things that I offer with my classes. Uh, I wanted to create a series of short video tutorial things just to give you guys a taste. Uh, and another thing that I, I want to do is I'm going to be reaching out to you guys. I'm going to be reaching out to the community and people via Facebook or Twitter or whatever and uh, try and get some feedback from you. If there are any questions, uh, comments, things you want to ask me or, or learn about, um, and I can throw them in some of these short videos and, and give you some insight. Uh, so in this first one, uh, I got a question from CP the Artist, the Illist, on Facebook. Um, and he asked a couple questions. He asked, so he wants to know about my types of brushes that I use, uh, how I use Photoshop layers, and uh, what are my palette colors. So that's a whole bunch. Uh, I'm going to try and condense that because I, I don't want these videos to go too long. I want them to kind of be bite-sized. Um, so let's talk about brushes. Um, you know, if you look closely, especially in, in my more recent pieces, I, I like to go for a, a pretty painterly, loose type of look. So it's it's still realistic. It's still, you know, really detailed, but you can still see a lot of the brushwork. Um, and I, I often have people ask me about the types of brushes I use, and for me, there there really isn't anything complicated to it. I really only ever use this brush right here, the Chalk 17 brush, or the Chalk 17 Pixels brush. Um, for the longest time, I exclusively used the Hard Round brush. Ooh, that's the eraser. Uh, I exclusively used the Hard Round brush and just did a whole bunch of blending. Ooh, pressure sensitivity. I should get myself together here. Uh, Use the pressure sensitivity to blend and things like that. Um, but now, almost exclusively, I use this Chalk 17 brush. Um, I find it's just a little more gestural uh, and a little more painterly looking than the hard round. Um, I think a lot of people uh, really get carried away with creating custom brushes and texture brushes and things like that. Uh, and I've used some in the past. Um, I think I, I put a decent amount in this one of custom brushes. Uh, but I feel like you, you can very easily get overwhelmed uh, either creating custom brushes or using custom brushes. And for me, if I'm ever going to use them, I really just kind of like to use them as accents. Otherwise, it, it it's a little bit too overwhelming. Uh, this one has some custom texture brush in it. You can see just like little details here, uh, you know, over in this general general region for some texture and a change of pace. But now, really, I almost exclusively in this one and this one here. It's all that 17 chalk brush, and it's really just a question of how you use it. Um, so, you know, I, I like to really get some sketchiness in certain areas, like in highlights. I should make sure I'm on the right layer. Uh, you know, and kind of just have it be kind of loose and painterly. So it's much less about the brush itself, it's much more about the application. And now we're at about 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So. That's the first question. Let's uh, try and expedite here. So the next question he asked was, how do I use my layers? Uh, and another thing that I frequently see is people just going crazy with their layers. Don't mind the phone in the background. Um, and that's that's fine. You know, one of the great... Turn this thing off. One of the, the great... Uh, things about Photoshop is you do have access to layers which allows you to uh, to make changes 
to different elements in a scene without affecting the things under it. So it's, it's a really great and useful tool. Uh, the downside is it's very easy to get carried away. Uh, like, for example, if I was going to use this, uh, if I was going to make this portrait here, uh, maybe I could have a layer for the jacket and a layer for the hair and a layer for the eyes or whatever. Um, and that's great. It gives you a lot of control. But maybe down the road, it's, it's overwhelming. You don't know which layer you want to be working on. It's just it gets overwhelming. Um, so what I try and do is I try to really keep it simplified. It looks, if you look over here in my layer tab, uh, it looks like there's a bunch here, but in reality, it's not. I, I, uh, as I go through my painting process, especially with portraits, uh, I usually do things in stages. Like I'll do an underdrawing or under uh, underdrawing and then underpainting, uh, initial kind of color overlay, glazing, uh, blocking in colors, and then details and any other final adjustments. So I really only have layers for those stages. At any given time when I'm working, um, I'll be working on maybe one layer. And then if I want to make any changes, like if I want to try something out and I don't want to mess up what's underneath, I don't know why I'm doing this, uh, maybe I'll make a new layer and then once I'm satisfied with that, I will flatten that down. So it's really just a question of consolidating things. Uh, and it also comes in handy because I work at a very high uh, resolution. So the more layers you have, the more uh, memory it's going to use, the slower your system is going to start, you know, things are going to start to chug. So the more consolidation you can do, uh, the better off you're going to be. And in forcing yourself to limit your layers, it really makes you make conscious decisions. It forces you to... Uh, to know what you're doing and really be responsible for your, your color choices and your brushwork, um, which I like. I think that that's a good way to train yourself. Um, what was the last question? Uh, color. What are the color palettes I use? Um, I have tried in the past to, in this one especially, I made like a, a new layer. Uh, where I put a color palette on. I did this sort of thing and then I put the colors I'd be using throughout. Uh, I don't know, just bear with me here. So I, at the beginning before I started, I put all these colors out that I'd be using um, kinda, kinda to save myself work down the line. Um, but for me, I really just, I do it as I go. I think the most important thing um, is really just to take your time with, with anything. I think that there's this tendency for everybody to, to feel like you need to rush. You know, we, we, we do speed paintings. There's this fascina fascination with doing things very quickly. Uh, and I think it's really important to take your time in the the drawing stage and also when you're choosing your colors um, you know if I've got reference on you know this side of my screen and I got my canvas over here I'm really gonna take a minute to look at those colors and make sure um, you know I'm seeing them accurately so I can apply them so I, I don't really have uh, pre-created color palettes what I do 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 um, is look for you know the the ambient color in a scene for this portrait exam you know for example there was a lot of you know there's a lot of cool well, let's go to this one there's uh the whole thing is kind of cool and what i mean by that it's everything's got some blue in it um so you can see is i initially laid down a lot of this kind of bluish purple color here uh and then on top of that I started adding some of these flesh tones and other things, but by putting down that blue across the whole canvas, it's kind of like an underpainting. Uh, you know, you add your ambient color to the whole canvas and then start building on top of that. So no matter what colors you put on top of that, there's always going to be that ambi that base color in it. Um, so for you know for this, everything has a little bit of blue in it, um, and then the rest is just observation. Um, 
some other stuff. It also helps to know some, you know, basic principles of color and light. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, yeah, I'm looking at the reference I have and using my eye to, uh, you know, to sort of replicate some of those colors. Um, but another thing that's really helpful is to know, like I said, the, the fundamentals of color and light. So for example, um, something to note if you have, let me see if I have an example here. Um, ugh. Anyway, just listen. Uh, so <laughs> cast shadows that you have on up-facing planes. And what I mean by that is uh, if you've got uh, a car parked on the street, that car is casting a shadow on the street. Uh, that cast shadow is on an up-facing plane because the street faces up towards the sky. Uh, more often than not, cast shadows on an up-facing plane are cool. They're going to have some blues or purples in them. Uh, and cast shadows on down-facing planes, like the underside of a roof or an awning, usually going to have warmer cast shadows. And the reason for that, uh, on up-facing planes like the, the street I mentioned, in the absence of the direct light from the sun, uh, all that there is is uh, the, the street... Uh, the shadow is reflecting the the cool color of the sky, so you get blue in that that uh, that cast shadow. We're in the down facing planes, where some practical application: the un underside of her nose, the underside of the eye sockets. Um, it's usually reflecting warmer things. Um, for example, the underside of a roof is usually reflecting the the ground, the grass, dirt, things like that. Um, so I know as I'm doing this that undersides of a nose or the eye socket or underside of a chin, there's going to be some warm stuff there. Uh, I'm way off track here. Uh, hope that answered a little bit. I'll probably, what I'll start doing is breaking down, even if it's one person asking, I'll start breaking them down into chunks so I can really focus on individual questions without getting off the rails here. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to upload it and have this act as kind of like a jumping off point uh, for some, some more Q&A and some brief video tutorials. Hope this was helpful, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.